what are the types of patent applications that are typically uh, submitted to the patent office? And most of you are here because you're interested in getting utility patent applications, that's the most common type. And what are they? They're the ones that cover machines, processes, we talked about processes, machines, uh, processes, articles of manufacture, and I refer you to an earlier patent seminar uh, of the, offered by Bebeck, and the um, URL is there for those of you who haven't seen it. That's the most common. What we also see are design patents, and those are strictly for ornamental features. What's a, a good example? A grill of a car, right? The, the front grill of a car is a very common thing that you see design patents on, or the actual wheel itself. Again, note not the functional aspects, just the way the thing looks. And then we have plant patents for new varieties of asexually reproducible plants. And you can see there's a particularly nice one here. And when you, if you ever do get one of these, you'll, when they give you the actual plant patent, they will print it in color. So you may want to go get one of these because they're pretty cool. Yes. So the question was, is there any restriction for uh, the type of design patent? No, there is no restriction. You can get it for cars, you can get it for, I mean, Apple has a lot of design patents on um, the iPad, on the, the connector, um, you know, on the, on the scroll wheel. So yes, you can get it for all different kinds of things. Um, you could get a design patent on baby bottle, for example. Actually, bottles are a very common uh, design patent feature as well. So almost anything, a golf club. Again, not for the use, the way the club is, but just for the way it looks. So almost anything you can get design. Okay, so some of you might be thinking, I can do this myself, it's not that hard. Well, it can be done, you could, you could file a patent application yourself, and uh, there are a lot of uh, people who do that, but it is complicated. This is a um, screenshot from the, the patent office website that shows the several decision points, and you can see, I'll say, I'll say applicant right here, show the series of decisions that you have to make. As you can see, it's not straightforward. Um, so most of you, if you're affiliated with a, uh, a university such as you are, will be using a technology transfer office to help you with these sorts of things. They will help you make filing decisions. They will look at the invention disclosure. Uh, how many of you have people here filed invention disclosures? Do you, does everybody know what that is? Good. Yep. Yeah. So it is. A, a, they will oftentimes when you have a, an invention, you will have the technology transfer office will ask you to describe it in. It could be five pages. It could be two pages, so that they have a sense of what it is that you think you have invented. And they will look to see, through the invention disclosure, is there a product? Who are the competitors? What does the market look like? What's the commercial value? They do those sorts of things because as an, in, as an inventor, that's not really your forte. Your forte is inventing, which is good. Uh, they will help you make decisions about filing strategies. As you can see, part of those, the design, uh, sorry, the um, decision box was, where do you want to file? Would you like to file in one country, multiple countries? or internationally, international patent application. And you might be interested in that if you desire patent protection in multiple countries. Or do you want to file in the US only? It's a choice. You could do both, but you could file in the US only, but you could file uh, in the US and internationally at the same time. And if you do, what kind of patent application would you like to file? And some of you may have heard these terms, provisional, non-provisional. Non-provisional is another term for the, they're both types of utility applications. Would you like to do expedited examination or not? Why would you want to do this? You have a competitor out there um, and you want to get a patent quicker. There are reasons for that. And we recommend, the patent office recommends that you use a patent agent or an attorney to help you because the process is complicated. We'll go through some of it, but there are a lot of decisions there, there's a lot of legalese. So the technology transfer office will help you with those decisions. Okay, so here's a term that we've heard often, provisional patent application. And after this evening, I don't think anybody's going to use the term provisional patent because again, there is no such thing. 
What is it? And the best way to think about this is it's a temporary demarcation of your rights. Okay? And it lasts for a maximum of 12 months. So you have an invention, you are still developing it for argument's sake, and you want to put a stake in the ground. I have invented this at a particular point. So you file a provisional patent application, and that gives you 12 months to do something else. You could file a non-provisional patent application after that. You could file an international patent application, or you could file in various other countries. But it's important to realize that you do only have 12 months because after that, you lose this demarcation line. The filing, you lose the filing date. So within 12 months, you need to do something. And I just want to remind you that a provisional patent application is never examined, and it's never published. So it's just a way, it's a relatively inexpensive way for you as in inventors to put a stake in the ground. Okay? And oftentimes you will hear uh, TTOs, sexual draft officers, recommending that you file a provisional because maybe you haven't fleshed the invention out as much. Okay? So, just so, again, this is so you understand the terminology, um, what you have.